In this video, we're going to take a look at some common pitfalls that you can run into when using lookup tables, as well as some tips and tricks on how to get around them. Recently, I have been using lookup tables for families other than pipe and conduit fitting families. But there are some limitations when using lookup tables. But with that said, I'm still a big fan of using lookup tables, and we'll take a look at an example here of how you could use it in an air handling unit family, so for mechanical equipment. All right, to begin, we need to create a lookup table, and those are defined in CSV files. You can use Excel to edit a CSV file, but be aware that some of the functionality, or really a lot of the functionality that you have in Excel will not save in that CSV file. So you'll see this warning here that there could be some data loss, and we'll, yeah, anyways, let's jump into it. So the benefit of use, one of the benefits of using a CSV file is that you can use formulas in Excel, but just be aware that those formulas will not save with the CSV file. So for example, Let's say we want to define our cooling load based off of our nominal tonnage here. So I'm going to enter an equal sign there. And there are 12,000 BTU hours per ton. So 12,000, and then we'll multiply that by our nominal tonnage. So I have a formula there. I'm just going to enter another formula for the heating load. And to keep it simple, I'm going to set it equal to the cooling load. And then for the airflow, let's use another common rule of thumb here. So our nominal tonnage multiplied by 400. So that's one benefit of using uh, the Excel is that you can enter in formulas. Okay, so instead of having to define those formulas in Revit, you could enter them here. Or once again, just kind of a high level benefit, if you're getting a table from the manufacturer with all this data, then you can just copy it and paste it into a CSV file. Okay, so now we entered some formulas, but one of the limitations is that when you save this file, so we save it, close it, and reopen it, the formula is not going to save along with this CSV file. Okay, we'll see that in just a second. Okay, so we saved it, and let's close it, and now let's go use it in Revit. So here's the air handling unit family. And on the Create ribbon in the Properties panel, I'll click Family Types. And we'll open our Family Types dialog. And here I have just one type. And I'm using my initials, just like I would, say, a manufacturer name. Okay. And so the benefit of using a, a lookup table is that you don't have to create a bunch of types. You can just enter all that data into the CSV file and then use the Size Lookup function. Okay, so we're about to see another limitation here. So if we want to specify the cooling load and the heating load and some of these other parameters based off of our CSV file, then we want to use that size lookup function. But just a quick note here. So you can see here, or what, what I want you to pay attention to are the units, okay? So we want to use uh, BTU per hour, right, for our cooling and heating load. So just jump, we'll just jump right into it. I'm going to move my notepad over here. So I like to use notepad or even notepad plus plus to enter formulas. And so that way I can just copy them and then paste them. And that way I don't have to try to do everything here in this tight little box. Okay. Now when I do, you can see that it says that I have an invalid input. Okay. So actually one, one thing that forgot to do is the first thing we need to do is 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 import the lookup table okay so I'm getting ahead of myself here so let me import the air handling unit lookup table okay let's start there first so don't forget to import that lookup table now we'll use that size lookup function okay here's what I was getting at inconsistent units so this can be a common pitfall especially on the MEP side and the reason is because in those lookup tables, and let me just open that back up real quick here so you can see. In the lookup table, and I'll see that now you can see that that formula went away. 
So, okay, we are constrained to certain parameter types, and those are number, length, area, volume, angle, and other. All right, so you can see some of those here. And so right now I'm just using number, okay? And so that's that's a, an issue, right? Because in on the MEP side, we want to use MEP units. So let me show you a workaround here. So I'll save this again and close it because we're going to need to re-import it. And I can't have both of those open. So I'll, I'll do it just for the cooling load and heating load. But what I do is I create a new parameter. And these are instance-based. And I'm going to name it cooling load unitless. And then I can use that number parameter type. There it is, number. And I'm going to put it under mechanical loads with the other one. All right. So now I have cooling load unitless and then cooling load. And we'll do one more just to, so you can see again. Heating load unitless. I'm going to make that instance based. We'll change this to number and I'll put it under mechanical loads. And then I'll move it down. Okay, now we can use the size lookup function for these parameters. So for our unitless parameters, and then use a formula for the heating load and the cooling load. All right, let me move, I guess I have that above there. Anyways, it doesn't matter. So what I'm gonna do, so for the cooling load, I'm going to set it equal to cooling load unitless. And then to get those units to work out, I'm simply going to divide it by one. And then when I do that, you can see here that it divides it by one and it basically just works out the units there. Okay. So Revit does that for you. And let me do this here. So sometimes you can even multiply it by one uh, for certain parameters. And I don't have a, an all encompassing list, but sometimes that doesn't work if multiplying it by one but dividing it by one works out. Uh, I've never had an issue with it not working out. Okay, so let's save this. And now let's go back to our lookup table one more time. And now the next thing we need to do is we need to change the, the parameters here to unitless, because that's what we want Revit to go look for. Okay, now I'm going to save that and let's go back to Revit and open our family types dialog and we need to re-import that lookup table. We'll just override the existing one. And okay, now let me find my formulas again. So now I have the formulas here in Notepad. And once again, I'm going to be calling the lookup table name, which I have that defined in this parameter. And I'm telling Revit to go look in the cooling load unitless column. And if it doesn't find a value, I'm just telling it to put a one in there. That way I know it kind of gives me an idea of what I need to go look for if I see that in a project. And then the model number. So that's what Revit's going to go looking for in that second column. Okay, so this was for the cooling load unit list. And then I can do the same thing for the heating load. We'll go grab that. Okay, so now we we're getting a one here just because we're missing, yeah, we're missing the model number there. Now, if I change the model number, which is what we're basing the lookup function off of, and I change that to JB-3, which let's just take a look here and double check. So if I change the model number to JB-3, then my cooling load and heating load should each be 36,000. All right, because we're telling Revit to go look for this value, okay, which is JB-3. So then it's looking in these columns because that's what we defined in the size lookup function. And now if we change it, 
the model number accordingly, we should see these things update. So everything's looking good. And just to show you one more time, I have a project where I have some already input or already defined. And so you can see here, and I have those, the airflow, I have these other parameters in here as well. So JB-3. So basically our example here is that if this is working off of a model number, okay? So you can yeah, when you when you place the equipment, you can change this model number instance parameter here, and then all these other parameters will update based off of that. But as I have mentioned before, there you can use any parameter. So even if you wanted to go based off of tonnage or airflow, uh, depending on your workflow, you could do that. And then when that instance parameter updates, the lookup function is looking for those other values here. So maybe, anyways, lots of use cases there, but. What I wanted to show in this video was that uh, you got to be careful with those units. And then one more thing here also to be aware of is that, for example, the model number is what we're using here. So there is the model parameter, which is available in Revit, but that is, that's a type parameter. Okay. And that's a, a built, as you can see here, built in parameter. And so if you're going to be doing a type-based parameter, then it doesn't work as well with lookup tables. And so that's why I created another parameter here called model number. Okay, so as you can see here, default, if you see the default, that means it's an instance parameter because that's just the default value that will appear when you load it into a project. And then whereas this model parameter here is a, a type parameter as you can see there. All right. Once again, check out our blog post if you want to see some additional information on formatting and some of those specifics. But yeah, check out lookup tables and implement those into your workflows. Howdy. Thanks for watching. If you'd like more free content from Click to BIM, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We also have affordable subscription options at click2bim.com where you can access all of our videos. We also have an amazing search feature that allows you to search through every single word in all of our videos to help you quickly find the answers to your questions.